Hi, I am Cesar Santos. If you're an artist, you probably want to sell your art, but do you buy art? I collect art because I love being surrounded by art. I remember when I was a little kid and my parents used to frame their favorite pieces of art that I did and they would hang it among my uncle's work. Raul Santos Serpa is my uncle and he is a successful artist in Cuba. His works hang in the National Museum of Cuba and in many other important collections around the world. So for me, it was a luxury already in a small apartment of my parents to exhibit my work next to art from a famous artist. That's the goal of every artist. That's why we want to exhibit in museums and good galleries because you're surrounded by great artists as well. That helped me visualize a successful career early on. And then I got into collecting a little bit more by exchanging with artists or buying cheap uh, sketches that I could afford at that time. And little by little, I started building a collection. Your environment is crucial to your development. And I understood early on that having original art by artists I admired around me would be a great source of inspiration. From the moment I became interested in classical art, I started looking for ways to be closer to the old masters and to study their work and to understand them. I decided to move to Italy to learn their techniques and their methods. Then I lived in Stockholm, Sweden while I was teaching classical drawing and I lived close to the National Museum, then to New York to have access to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. As soon as I came back to Miami, my hometown, I felt the lack of a classical art appreciation. I mean, we have museums and galleries that are full of contemporary art and modern art, but nothing before the 20th century. That's not the focus of Miami. Actually, Miami is younger than most of my art that I have in my house. <laughs> And don't take me wrong, I love Miami. Miami always brings me back because I love my culture, I love the food, I love the vibe. After all, they call Miami the magic city because it changes so fast. Every time I travel, I come back, Miami has something new and, and I love being here. So instead of going to the art that I like to see and be surrounded by, I'd rather create an environment that is comfortable for me while living in Miami. This situation in Miami was a push for me to keep collecting art, especially art that happened before modern art. And I don't want to call it the art of the past because all art is from the past, unless you're making it right now or will make it in the future. But that term, the art of the past, is made on purpose to make you feel old fashioned because it's not the trend. How far you want to go back to find inspiration is up to you. Some people just stay within a hundred years or so ago, finding inspiration exclusively inspired by modern art principles and period. We need to realize that art has gone through many, many periods of art, culture, philosophies, trends, which I find very enriching to learn from and be influenced by. For example, Rubens or Duchamp are both from the past. So don't be fooled when some refer to a certain type of art as the art of the past. All art has its value and it's up to the viewer to appreciate it. Recently I was in Florence and I passed by this antique shop and I fell in love with the art that was on display. I was overwhelmed by the amount of art in that place. I kept coming back and looking to not miss any corner that might have a treasure. And a treasure for me is when I see that an artist from the past solved very difficult artistic problems in a portrait. I love portraiture and I have an eye that is just attracted to those type of effects and I love to have them with me so I can study them in my own space. Some people think that art is a currency, it's an investment, but I'm an artist and I honestly don't care and don't think about that when I'm looking to buying art. When I find a painting that I love and when it takes me to a new psychological place of wonder, deep thought and inspiration, I really don't care who signed it, who the artist was. It's just the beginning of a relationship between me and that art. As an artist, I use the paintings I collect to study its artistic values. I do drawings from them, I study them, I copy them. Art is really the best company you can have. Always new, always provoking in thought, and yes, sometimes they increase in value. <laughs> One of the challenges of having art on your walls is that they require good lighting. Sometimes a glare can prevent you from appreciating the painting. So I've decided that for my new acquisitions, I would open a hole through the roof and let the natural light fall on my new pieces. 
I went ahead and got myself a nice big skylight UV protector to invite the light into my home. I believe that the art I collect helps me develop a style, a vocabulary that is based on classical art, but at the same time I'm using it in a contemporary context to offer an alternative artistic expression that combines the spirit of today with the soul of the past. Let's wrap this video up. As a young artist, I invest in old art that touches my heart and makes me realize the vastness of artists that we all are 